when you hear noises like this, when you feel the punches of the gearbox in your back, it feels like the car is alive for the simple reason that it feels like it's putting in an effort to transport you. EVs, they just feel like they don't care. Imagine this, you're living in the 1970s. For some reason, you managed to find a time machine and you transport yourself to 2023. The first thing you wanna do is find yourself a muscle car. What type of choices do you have today? Mustangs? I don't think so. Camaros? No, because a Camaro today is basically a sports car. So the only choice you're left with is going to be the Dodge Challenger. Unfortunately, Dodge is discontinuing this beautiful design. It's been around for 15 years, this specific design, just with some minor updates to the headlights and the taillights in the back. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna have, this is gonna be a sort of an homage to the muscle car and to the Dodge Chal Challenger in general. What we have here is a 2022 Hellcat, 717 horsepower from a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 connected to an eight-speed automatic. Huge thanks to ClearShift for letting me review this beauty today. It only has about 60 miles on the clock. It's brand new. If you're interested in this Challenger Hellcat, go and check them out at clearshift.com along with the rest of their inventory. So we're gonna have a look at the design of this car. We're gonna talk about the front side rear interior, then we're gonna take it for a drive. To me, as I said, this is the last remaining muscle car, not just in the design, but also in the spirit of this car. But having a look at the front end design, we have these four round headlights, very reminiscent of the 70s Challenger. And if you were to redesign the, the 70s Challenger into a modern car, I can't think of any other better design than this. If we talk about what is exactly muscle car design, to me, a muscle car design is um, built up by a lot of horizontal and vertical lines. And look at the front end of this car. Do you see a lot of horizontal lines? Yes, we have a lot of them right here connected with some very simple vertical lines. And that, in my opinion, creates a proper muscle car look. In addition, of course, to this big intake that we have on this specific Hellcat hood. What I love about this design is I think Dodge just went all in on their designs back in 2006 when they were sketching this up. And it's such a good design that they really didn't have to make any updates to the design. And it's still today outselling the Mustang and the Camaro. One detail that I love about the Challenger is that they didn't make the front end kind of uh, hug the road like we have in a lot of modern sports cars. What I mean by that is they didn't make anything down here stick out too far. If we look at this one side, which we're gonna do in just a second, you can see that the front end kind of leans inwards like we have in the original muscle cars from the 60s and the 70s while still adhering to modern regulations because you can't have a front like that. It's gonna create a lot of lift in the front end. So they added this beautiful spoiler, lip spoiler down here at the bottom. Overall, it's just a fantastic, timeless looking design that I'm really going to miss when it's gone. Now, when it comes to the side view, I think this is where you can clearly see the connection to the old 60s and 70s muscle cars. We have this gorgeous shoulder line that goes here, and then look what happens here. Boom, it goes right up over the rear shoulder, and then dipping slowly with this beautiful chamfer that we have here. I love that they have stamped out on the fuel cap. The wheels, these are 275 20s all around. So 275 width in the rear, and you can make the math, do the math here, 275 rear tires with 717 horsepower is not gonna traction that well. And that's another detail why I love this car. It's a proper muscle car. It doesn't really care that much about traction as it does burning rubber. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the wheel design on this Hellcat? I love these charcoal gunmetal wheels. They could have gone with black on black, but as you know, if you have black wheels, the design of the wheels themselves are kind of melting into the rest of the body. And this is the exact setup that I would have. If I had a black car, I would want to have them in gunmetal five spoke wheels, just like we have here with the massive Brembo brake calipers that we have behind them in red to make it pop a little bit. Another detail, design detail, that I think brings this back to the 70s and the 60s challenges. First of all, we have the side mirrors, which sits on the door. 
just like it should on a muscle car. If you were placed here, it would completely destroy the muscle car look of this car. Then we have the greenhouse. Just look at how straight it goes here. It doesn't try to be a sports coupe like we have in the Camaros and Mustangs these days. Instead, it goes straight in to the big B pillar. And look at the width of this thing. It's not gonna help you a lot with the visibility, but who cares when it looks this good? Coming back to the rear end graphics of the Challenger. And I mean, the more I look at this car, I get a little sad because I really want Dodge to continue this design. I, I, I don't, rec I don't uh, require any changes to this design. Just keep it in production. It's selling so well. And as I said, this is a design that is so timeless that it's still going to outsell, I would assume, the new Mustang if they decided to put this, continue this in production. But let's have a look at the rear graphics here, for example. We have rectangular taillights, which is super simple design when it comes to the graphics. But if you see this at night, and if anybody sees these taillights at night, they're instantly gonna recognize that this is a Dodge Challenger. And that's the beauty of simple graphics that's been hammered in on a model over a long period of time. Another detail that I love about this rear end is this spoiler. They didn't have to put this here, and I don't think it has any function, honestly. But it looks great, and it doesn't look complicated. It looks like something somebody might have put on in their garage as an aftermarket piece. We do have the rear mirror, uh, the rear camera integrated right here in this wing, but you can see that it doesn't really fit the bodywork perfectly. And to me, that's a positive for this car. It's supposed to be a simple muscle car and having this wing not really fitting properly or having a distance between the wing and the body, it, to me at least, it adds to that muscle car philosophy. Down low, we have two big exhaust pipes and this car sounds fantastic. We're gonna have a listen to that in just a minute when we jump into the interior. And we have a proper looking bumper here clean design you have a clear separation for the bumper and the top part graphics and this wing to set this design off in a very nice way i just wanted to show this view before we jump into the interior because i want to show you this wing and how it how it sets the design off and how important this wing is to the design in my opinion and also look at the thickness of the b pillar in this case just how thick it is and how everything comes together in this stunning muscle car that is the dodge challenger Welcome to the interior of an icon, the Dodge Challenger. And what we have here, we have analog gauge clusters for the tachometer and the speedometer. I think that is as positive in the Hellcat because it is supposed to be an homage to the 60s and 70s Challengers and having it everything be digital to me it just would not work in that kind of philosophy. So having those analog gauges works for me because we still have a pretty large screen right in the center between those two. I love the design of these gauges. This is one, another thing that why I sometimes prefer analog gauges is because you can design them with physical pieces, different textures and, and different um, fonts for the graphics and it still looks very, very good. I love the housing for the gauge cluster because we have this piece up here, soft touch material. Then we have this trim piece of uh, silver going all around it. And I'm sure everybody's used to this interior by now, but do I necessarily want any changes in here? I don't think so. To me, this is a perfect looking interior. We have the paddles for the gauge, uh, for the uh, automatic uh, transmission. And we have a decently sized screen. This looks to be about 10 inches or so. Perfectly sized screen with the vents visible right next to them. No crazy vents that you have to Google how to use or anything like that. They're right here with a chrome trim around them. I would probably want to have this in, uh, maybe in black or maybe the same silver like we have out here. But chrome works. I don't really care about that. Down here, we have the controls for the radio and the climate control, all analog with nice buttons and dials for everything you need. And then we have this steering wheel, which it feels big. It feels proper for this car with the paddles, the paddles sticking out pretty much uh, pr pretty high above the top part of the of the side spokes as you know i would like to have them stick down a little bit further at the bottom as well but this is totally fine and we have almost i, I would call this a flat bottom steering wheel with some nice white stitching on the inside 
fully wrapped in leather and here we have the big uh, ge gear selector which I'm sure everybody's used to from these type of products feels really nice in the hand very easy to grab a hold of and just switch gears and we also have of course a big glove box right there looking up top no sunroof and I love that perfect I don't want sunroof I don't care if I'm driving a Hellcat don't care about a sunroof I'm never gonna use it anyway and have a look at the door design and just how simple everything is and again I think that works in favor of the Challenger being as simplistic on the outside as it is on the inside we have two cup holders right here I don't see anywhere to put my phone but again I don't care about that I take this car out to drive and we also have a decently sized uh, glove box here with a 12 volt and you have two USB ports and an auxiliary point right here talking about these seats these are leather wrapped seats with some blood dark red seat belts which I think complements the interior and kind of brings it back to the calipers that we have all around this car it they do have some nice bolstering to it they're very aggressive on the sides which I like they're pretty big I can uh, slide around in these uh, pretty well so if you're a larger person I think these would still be very comfortable and really hug you specifically on the sides another detail that's uh, interesting in the, in the side in the doors are the the positioning of the door handle itself it's down here by almost right next to my legs and then you have this whole piece being completely empty again coming back to the simplicity of this design so with that said we now have a 6.2 liter supercharged v8 up front and the only thing that matters is the power and the sound in a muscle car the this car does that do those two very well so let's fire it up and let's listen to what this 6.2 liter v8 sounds like sounds absolutely fantastic you got 717 horsepower up front all the power <laughs> sent to some relatively skinny 275 tires in the rear With that said let's take this beast and this legend this rare endangered breed out for a drive okay guys setting off I'm sitting inside a future legend right now so you might ask it's 2022 it's got 62 miles on the clock how much do I have to pay for this specific this one this Hellcat that we're sitting in right now this is as it sits it's around $79,000 and I think honestly if you take care of these cars and if you maintain them properly I think these are gonna going to hold their value really well because you know what the next challenger is gonna be right it's gonna be a uh, a uh, what's it called the the Daytona Banshee or, or something like that the electric one there is no internal combustion there is no supercharger in that one you have an electric engine making some really weird noises but here here we have a proper 6.2 liter supercharged v8 and they're not gonna be along around for much longer and if you want one specifically if you want one brand new now is probably the time to get one it has that crazy super charger wine to it and the thing is you're sitting in here and you're driving this car and you know how good it looks from the outside this is one of these cars that even after 15 years of production I still feel like I'm, make, I'm doing the environment around me a service just by driving by specifically with these 20 inch um, gunmetal wheels with the Hellcat trim it's just a beautiful looking car I'm looking at Mustang Mach-E just taking off over there I guess that's the future of muscle cars and here we have a lucid air I'm probably probably can catch it on the camera it looks pretty sleek the lucid I like the design does it have any identity not so sure pretty big turning radius for this good old Challenger <laughs> 
Oh, it's such an experience driving these with the noise, with the power. You have the 275 wheels in the rear. It's such a shame that Dodge is discontinuing these. Think about it. Ford is going to be the new benchmark for what a muscle car is because they are going to be the only ones still having a big V8, internal combustion V8, in the lineup. And that's nuts. While still is still selling crazy, uh, selling crazy numbers with the Dodge Challenger, they just decided to say, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to leave that over to Ford. To me, it just doesn't make sense. And the next Camaro, who knows what that's going to be. If it's going to be a... Uh, uh, I've heard so many different things. Sed electric sedans, SUV, who knows. <laughs> do you hear that? Even at low RPMs, you can hear that whine coming from the supercharger. What I love about internal combustion engines, specifically that had, has noises like this, uh, compared to any fast EVs. EVs are, are quick, they're super fast, they're just 16, one second or whatever. But the thing is, when you hear noises like this, when you feel the punches of the gearbox in your back, it feels like the car is alive for the simple reason that it feels like it's given it, given, and it, it's putting in an effort to transport you. EVs, they just feel like they don't care. You can press uh, the gas, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go fast, so what? Here, it feels like it's an event. That's what I love about specifically the Challenger. Massive thanks to uh, the guys at ClearShift for letting me review this car today. If you want this car, if you're interested in this car, or if you're interested in any sort of truck or SUV, they have a fantastic inventory right now. So go and check them out at clearshift.com, and I'm gonna link that down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more reviews just like this. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.